Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 1981 suspense thriller Southern Comfort. It's a land of hospitality, unless you don't belong. Now, this is a film that I've heard a lot of good things about from critics as well as friends. Uh, before I even get started with this review, I want to give a very special shout out and thanks to uh, Matt my very good friend, one of the best friends I've ever had, uh, Rambo Rat for Life, for sending me this uh, DVD a while back. I know he's a really big fan of this one. And this is a movie that ultimately I wasn't that enthusiastic or wasn't really a film that I honestly thought I was going to like after I saw it. Uh, it's one of those movies that I saw it and I thought that it was average. But then I slept on it and I thought about it some more. And ultimately, I decided that it was a better film than an average movie. This is not a mediocre film. This is not a meh film. This is definitely at least above average. I liked the film okay, ultimately. But I didn't love it. And... I, uh, but despite that, I definitely understand why this has a fan base. I understand why people who think this is great and think that it's a classic feel that way. There are a lot of things about it, a lot of elements about Southern Comfort that I also really appreciate. Um, and I definitely also understand why it has a cult following. And I, I also feel that this is going to be one of those movies that with more viewings, I will start to appreciate it even more. So I have a very strong feeling this is a film that will grow on me. I'm going to check this film out uh, sometime next year uh, out of the blue and see what my thoughts are on it then. Um, but it's one of those movies that I definitely feel will grow on me because I don't think... This most recent viewing was the most fair viewing for it because I've been doing a marathon of very similar films to Southern Comfort. So I don't know if it feeling a little bit derivative is honestly the film's fault. I think that's more of the fault that it's my fault. I've been watching a lot of these similar movies of survival thrillers that take place in the wilderness. That being said, though, I did like the film. And there were elements to it that I thought were absolutely impressive. Uh, for one, the direction by Walter Hill is one of those elements. And speaking of elements, he does an amazing job dealing with the elements. Dealing with the weather. Dealing with the environment that he decided to shoot in in the Louisiana Bayou. Which is notorious for being a nightmare to shoot in. And he handled that with such a deft hand that it is a really astonishing directorial uh, job here, as well as the cinematography by Andrew Laszlo. Because with this environment, you got like not that much time at all to get your shots because your camera stand is going to sink into the ground. So it's one of those things where you got to be on your feet. You got to be thinking fast. And this easily could have turned out to be a rushed film because that's kind of how it is. Like, you just got to rush your shots. But it didn't come across that way. The shots in this are gorgeous, they are just breathtaking. Uh, easily one of the most impressive films that I've seen that shoots. Uh, sequences in this particular environment. And I love this environment anyway in the Louisiana Bayou. It's It's got a very particular mood and atmosphere to it that is just really eerie and uh, really evokes a, a sense of dread because it, it's just humid and it's sticky and it's hot and it's just an all-around nasty place to be, especially uh, to be stuck in and have to keep looking around the corner to try to see if someone's going to get you. So, um, 
even though this isn't a horror film, there are horror elements to it because of the fact that this is a very horrific environment and a very horrific situation to be in. Now, the script by uh, Walter Hill and David Geiler, because Michael Caine originally wrote a draft that uh, Walter Hill and David Geiler rewrote. So the original draft for this film is nowhere near the ultimate finished product. So it's one of those films that someone wrote wasn't that strong. So Walter Hill and David Geiler came on and did a rewrite on it. This is also one of those movies that was released through Fox, but for some reason didn't get a DVD released through Fox. It was released through MGM. Might have some something to do with the company that owned it or the company that uh, produced the film, the cinema, I think it's called Cinema Group, uh, releasing. That might have something to do with them. Now, the movie cost 7.6 million, not 77, I mean, that would be insane. Uh, $7.6 million. And it only made about $5 million in the U.S. because it had a very limited release. Uh, do I feel it should have done better in the box office? A little bit. Uh, especially considering it did have a good critical acclaim. Good amount of critical acclaim when it came out. So it's one of those movies that, yeah, it could have done better. But ultimately, it wouldn't have done that great in my opinion, because of the fact that it's a, it's a hard sell. It doesn't have any like really big stars. So I definitely feel that it would have been one of those movies that would not have been a hit regardless. And thankfully though, it's ended up finding an audience who really love this movie. As you can see by different reviews, uh, IMDb's uh, score out of 10, and so on and so forth. And it re, uh, it actually got a Blu-ray release from Shout Factory. Which I don't have. I might get some down on the road. Because I think this film would look really good. Remastered. Because like I said. There's some really excellent. Just really wonderful visuals in this movie. Now. Another aspect of the film that I want to point out. That I really liked was the score by Ry Cooter. It fits the mood and the atmosphere and the environment of the bayou like a glove. It's got this Cajun vibe to it. It's unique, and that's one of the things I really, really like about the score by Ry Cooter. It's such a unique score. A uh, very interesting, intriguing score. I also uh, feel that the overall concept is strong. I like the idea of a survival film where a group of individuals have to not only survive the wilderness, but also themselves and a uh, group of other people that are trying to hunt them down. And if that wasn't effective enough, or if that wasn't an interesting or captivating enough of a plot, this film also throws in the aspect that they only have very few rounds of ammunition. And other than that, they have blanks and they have their wits and they have their fists and maybe their feet. That's really all they have. They don't have anything else. And they're completely in over their head in an environment they're not familiar with. And they have to find a way to work together or perish. And that's ultimately what happens. Uh, the, the, the film, as it, as it, progresses it really shows the metal and the true nature of all of the characters so you'll have characters who are impulsive who waste their ammo you'll have characters that uh, are foolish who uh, get a little bit too uh, cocky or they think they're going to be a hero and that doesn't work out. You even have a character who has a, a mental breakdown, which is definitely something unique in this type of movie. You have your hothead, who is a total asshole, who is really just escalating things. And then you have your really cool and collected characters in the group, who ultimately are the ones that are the final survivors because they're the ones that are able to keep their head 
despite uh, the circumstances. So, yeah, th that aspect of the script I really like. I also like a lot of the other little sort of little touches uh, in, in sequences that I, I feel are just really well shot and really well put together. There's a really suspenseful, thrilling sequence that involves the characters, the National Guardsmen. They're, they're running uh, and trying to stay one step ahead of all these falling trees. I, I, that was a really well shot uh, sequence. And it shows that you can make an exciting, thrilling sequence in a film like this without gunplay, without that type of thing, without explosions and so on and so forth. I also just really, I, I, I just, just, I can't sing the praises of Walter Hill's direction enough or Andrew Laszlo's cinematography because it's just, I just, I really love this environment and I think it's such a really cool place to have a film like this is in the uh louisiana bayou and uh it's got a really solid cast keith carradine uh who plays one of the leads uh he plays P P pfc spencer you also have powers booth who plays charles harden and these are two actors that really didn't I mean, Powers Booth did get more uh, roles after this, but Keith Carradine, sadly, didn't really seem to get another big role like this. He got some bit parts here and there, but his career never took off, really, after Southern Comfort, which is really too bad because his performance in this was great. And it, it's crazy to me that someone with that, that, that show that much talent really didn't go that far, especially considering he's a member of the Carradine family. Uh, the guy who, the guy who was in revenge of the nerds had a bigger career, had more of a career than Keith Carradine did, which is really honestly too bad. Nothing against the guy who was in revenge of the nerds powers booth. Uh, he would go on to be known as like one of the best villains uh, in, in cinema, because he would just get cast to play all these bad guys and, and for good reason, because he's so good at it. But here he really stretches his acting muscles and shows his versatility and shows that he could also play a good guy. You know, he's got flaws, but he's not a bad guy. He's not a villain. So that, that was really nice to see Powers Booth, uh, play a role like this, which you really did not get to see, uh, that often. And definitely not after this. I mean, after this, he was cast as Jim Jones in the Guyana Tragedy movie. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he didn't really seem to, to get that many more op opportunities to play a role like this. I think he did a few, but not a lot. And it's too bad, because he really did pull it off. I, lo I, love the I really thought he did a great job playing the mysterious loner. The cynical uh, Texas uh, Army National Guardsman who's transferred to the Louisiana Army National Guard and he's got to try to figure things out and find his place into in this uh, new uh, this new uh, faction, so to speak. Now, they and also the fact that it's National Guardsmen that's something that's different too. Another aspect I also really liked about the script is the opening. The opening, it just grabs you. It's shocking. Uh, it, it's it's one of those you didn't really quite see it coming type deals where things just really get out of hand. Uh, and it starts off with a bang, literally. So I, I definitely wanted to give it a lot, the, the film a lot of credit for that. Uh, that was very effective. Also, I appreciate the flawed, the flaws. I appreciate that the characters have flaws and they're not perfect. Uh, initially, I had a problem with that, but the more I think about it, the more it makes it unique and the more I like that about the film. It makes it stand out among other films uh, from this particular genre where you have like these characters that they're not perfect. For example, the lead guy, I mean, not the lead, I mean, the guy who starts this whole shit show uh, he's, he's a total fuck up. And I, and, and, you know, I, I like the fact that they're like, yep, they acknowledge that. Yeah. There's fuck ups in groups like this, <laughs> you know, 
just absolute fucking dipshits who make life harder for the other people who are are not uh, that prone to fucking up. And so, yeah, I do like that about the film quite a bit. Uh, that being said, though, that's one aspect of the film in terms of the story, in terms of the screenplay, that hurts the film for me is that there aren't that many characters that I really was able to latch on to other than Keith Carradine and Powers Booth's characters. Fred Ward, it was a great performance, but he's an asshole. He's not really, he's a hothead and he's kind of a dick. Well, he's not kind of a dick, he is a dick. And that's the point, but I don't know, I just, compared to his character in, uh, for example, Uncommon Valor, it's just not a very likable character. Uh, Franklin, the, I'm trying to remember the other actors, um, yeah, the, the Casper, Sergeant Casper played with Les Lanham, he's there, but there's nothing particularly that likable about him, uh, Stucky, I really didn't like, he's the fuck up that started this whole thing, I like Peter Coyote, the little bit that he was in, uh, Alan Autry, he's, he's, he's the guy who has a, a mental breakdown, and uh, he's he's there for me. I'm not not like totally like really uh, a huge fan of his character either, but you know it, it is what it is. And um, there's a few other act like T.K. Carter. I really like T.K. Carter. Uh, I, I definitely uh, felt bad when he when he died. And wait, he died was brutal too. Um, it was like one of those traps that like Rambo would set up where, you know, the, something would trigger it and like you get stabbed by some wooden spikes. So really felt bad there. And it was nice to see TK Carter. Uh, I remember him from John Carpenter's The Thing. So he was in that and it was nice to see him here. And there's this other guy, I, I think it was, uh, Frank, it was a Franklin... Seals? Maybe it was Franklin Seals. I, I didn't mind him either as like one of the, the privates. But he but he didn't really have a lot of aspects of his character that were that engaging. I just thought he you know he was just a good guy. It seemed like a, a guy with a good nature. But uh, just a lot of other stuff that just... Other characters that didn't really click for me. And then th there were characters that, in my opinion, lived too long... Because then it hurt the suspense, it hurt the pacing, because I'm like, I don't really care what happens to them. So I, I felt that kind of hurt the film for me personally. Uh, I know it's not an action movie, but I maybe would have liked a little bit more, like something. Like maybe some shotgun fun at the end. Uh, and also maybe more of a clear uh, antagonist, like like a like there was a Cajuns, but it didn't seem like there was a, there was a lot... Um, in terms of like their character. So I would have liked a little bit more of that. Like maybe swap things around and have Brian James be like the main villain and have like a fight with Powers Booth at the end. I think that would have really enhanced the film, if you ask me. I also don't like the ending because where they end up, uh, Powers Booth and Keith Carradine, they end up in a Cajun town. And the film just comes to a screeching halt to me because it's building and building and building. It's a slow burn and it builds and builds and builds. And then they stop at a Cajun town and like drink some beers. And I, I was just like, I, I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, but that's just me personally. I would have preferred that it just it stayed in the bayou and it concluded in the bayou uh, and didn't go to a Cajun town. But that's just me personally. Uh, and, but if you wanted to do it that route, uh, then give more of a, an explosive climax. I'm not talking about like a literal explosion, but like I said, like a fight with Brian James or something. Cause to me, it went by a little bit too quick for all of these, all the hell that, that the Cajuns put, uh, Keith Carradine and Powers Booth and company through, uh, they really get dispatched pretty quickly. It uh, one Cajun gets stabbed in the groin and then another one gets hit in the face with the butt of a gun. And I think another one gets stabbed with a bayonet and that's it. And I, I don't know. I just, I just personally thought was a little, that was a little disappointing considering you're building and building and building. And then 
everything seems to just resolve itself in like a couple minutes. And I understand what I mean, or, or less really. I understand what they're trying to go for. They're trying to create this paranoia at the end, but eh, I, I didn't feel it was that effective. Also, I did not need the scene of a pig getting slaughtered. That was completely unnecessary. What was the point of that? I thought it was just gross. It wasn't Cannibal Holocaust bad, but it was still like, really? Was that really necessary? Um, but yeah, those are really the, the, the problem, the main issues I have with it. Would have liked a little more action, uh, especially near the end. And I'm not talking, it's not an action film, I understand that, but just a little bit, bits and pieces that kind of help the pacing a little bit more. Like maybe have a scene where, like instead of some of the soldiers, like not hitting anything or like just wasting their ammo and just hit, being idiots, maybe have them actually hit something. I mean, there's one guy who got shot, but other than that, a lot of it's just like wandering around the, the bayou and just firing blanks. Um, Would have liked a little bit more uh, of uh, effectiveness from some of these soldiers that makes me like, I don't know, adds to adds to the, I don't know. It just makes it so like these characters, uh, you, you feel that they have a chance because a lot of the time there were, there were characters in the national guard that were featured in the film that I just didn't feel stood a chance against the Cajuns because they were just completely out of their depth. And I understand that's the point. But it just hurts the pacing because ultimately you're like, yeah, you you know that they're gonna they're gonna get it in the end. Maybe try to make it a little bit more ambiguous, so to speak. Uh, but that's just just me personally, and I just I felt Brian James was wasted. I, I you know he's great, and I just would have liked to have seen him have a bigger role, and been a villain. Like have him, have him be the lead of the Cajuns and he shows up in the Cajun town and that that's what he gets in a fight with uh, Powers Booth and Keith Carradine and maybe he gets hung at the end. Maybe, you know, because there's the whole stuff where you see like a rope and and it's it's insinuated that maybe they're going to hang Keith Carradine or Powers Booth. But then ultimately it leads to the lead Cajun getting hung and then they get the hell out of there. I, I, I would have... I would have liked that a little bit more, but that's just me personally. That's my personal uh, thoughts uh, on the climax and why I feel it's a little bit of a letdown. But anyway, yeah, I don't know what else to say about uh, Southern Comfort, except if I were to rate it out of five stars, I would give the film three and a half out of five. Like I said, I feel it's an above average film for me personally. I like it, but I don't love it. I, I feel it, it gets bogged down a little bit too much in terms of pacing. Uh, there's a lack of characters that I really latch on to other than the other than the leads which is probably the point but I'm not saying it's it's the fault of the actors because they all do really good jobs it's just the characters just I just didn't really latch on to that much other than Keith Carradine and Powers Booth uh would have liked a little bit more of some action maybe a little bit more of some moments of suspense and a little bit more to the climax but uh other than that I, 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 like I said, I like the film and I would recommend it. I would recommend it, uh, especially if you find it curious or if you're a fan of Walter Hill and also, uh, recommend it because it's a movie that definitely has fallen through the cracks a little bit. And I definitely feel that there are a lot of elements to it that make it definitely worth at least one watch. Uh, and ho and who knows, maybe you'll like it a lot more than I did. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. And as always, I will see you later. See ya.